Thank you for joining us for another edition of InfoWars Nightly News. It's Tuesday, April 17th, 2012. I'm Alex Jones. Tonight, Happy Enslavement Day, the day when Americans pay their tax to the private Federal Reserve. Then, the TSA expansion accelerates as Big Sis launches undercover TSA spies to ride buses in Houston, Texas. Next, New York Senator proposes equipping transit workers with tasers. Plus, Black Hawk helicopters over the city of Chicago. Six-year-old girl handcuffed by police for misbehaving at school. And Ted Nugent calls the Obama team a bunch of criminals. We'll also be joined by director and researcher Dan Dix as he blows wide open the inside job that was 9-11. Strap yourselves in. It's InfoWars Nightly News. Let's jump right into our top story. Reuters reports that in the history of our republic, 235 years, we are seeing a record number of Americans who are expatriating, who are giving up their citizenship because they don't like the private Federal Reserve that is taxing them through the IRS that they set up in 1913 to rob the American people. And of course, this report dovetails with our top story from yesterday where the IRS has had the law passed through the Senate. They claim they're going to get the votes in the House to bar you from leaving the country and take your passport if they say outside of a court and due process you haven't paid your taxes to the private Federal Reserve that's then transferred to Warren Buffett, Barack Obama, the Rothschilds, Rockefellers in the banker bailout. Similar to the banking dictatorship they admit they've set up in Europe. But meanwhile, our children are being trained by the banksters to be good little slaves. Police handcuffed charged six-year-old girl for misbehaving. When did cops become so cowardly and pathetic? Paul Watson asked at InfoWars.com. This little girl simply threw a fit, and they don't let the teachers spank them. They don't let parents spank them. It's not against the law, but they tell you it is. So then when your child's out of control, the police come and take you to jail. It's one thing to take her to jail. It's another thing to charge her. By the way, uh, one more little point on the whole IRS coup d'etat, which is French for coup d'etat, to quote Carlos from Hop. When you're looking at this whole situation, they've now announced that 30,000 plus U.S. troops that are delinquent and paying money to George Soros and the Federal Reserve and Ted Turner and the rest of them, that they're going to have their passports taken. <laughs> so <laughs> that's also up at InfoWars.com. Continuing now with a very big story that we just came out with in the last few hours. It was on Houston TV. The congresswoman is bragging about it, but it didn't get national attention. Now DrudgeReport.com is uh, carrying it, the biggest news aggregator uh, in the world. Homeland Security launches undercover TSA spies to ride Houston buses. This is actually nationwide already going on, but now they're just admitting it. Feds out of their jurisdiction on buses listening to people for pre-crime behavior. Unbelievable. Democratic Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee unveiled the program labeling bus safe. The, the, the feds are now over your buses. Why even have states? Of course, they're run by the foreign banks. So the foreign bankers now are uh, over your buses. During a press conference on Friday, according to Metropolitan Transit Authority of Houston, Metro press release, agencies involved in the scheme will ride buses, perform random bag checks, that'll be your testicles next, TSA always phases it in, and conduct canine sweeps as well as special uniformed and plainclothes officers at transit centers and rail platforms to detect, prevent, and address latent crime activity and behavior. I thought TSA was fighting Al-Qaeda, the same folks our government has attacking Libya, Syria, and other countries. No, the truth is Homeland Security is for you and your family. It is the foreign banker occupation squeeze meant to destroy this republic. It is the foreign occupational government that has hijacked our nation. So that story is just absolutely huge. You think you're just not going to fly and not have your kids have their genitals grow up by perverts? There's no stopping the pervert armies of the New World Order until we realize just how evil they are and say no in mass. And again, uh, this report was also first uh, picked up um, by 
HoustonFreeThinkers.com doing a great job as well. They shot video off their TV screen of this quick clip of the Congresswoman worshiping the Nazi Germany Soviet style takeover. But that safety will apparently come somewhat at the expense of civil liberties. These officers will be able to search bags at random and canines might be brought in. But you don't like the bag searches? No, not at all. Because I can't like a lot of food and people always ask me for my food. The bus safe program is a collaboration between the Congresswoman, Metro, Precinct 7 constables, and the TSA. So let's be clear, the TSA violating the 10th Amendment is now going to violate the 4th Amendment with local police randomly searching people that are on buses. This was always the plan. Train everybody to accept it at airports, then phase in the bag searches, next the genital grope, next the strip search of old ladies. This is the total destruction of the Bill of Rights and Constitution. This is a criminal revolution against our Republican due process. And it's bipartisan. Our country has been conquered by foreign banks. Now moving on to another transit story. New York Senator proposes equipping transit workers with tasers. So now the regular city, county, state workers are going to be armed with these. And if you don't do what they say or mind all their orders, they're going to hit you with tasers. And they keep beefing the tasers up with more and more power. So now it's killing people. That's why they call them less lethal. Publicly, they're called non-lethal, but they're actually lethal. Now, moving on to the police state, there are thousands of urban warfare drills. You heard me right. When I was first covering this 16, 17 years ago, there were dozens of urban warfare drills, then hundreds by the mid-2000s, 2005 or so. Now, thousands. The army takes over your town, small towns, big cities, Marines, foreign troops. They train the Boy Scouts to go door to door for gun confiscation. It's all acclimating you, just like TSA acclimates you for martial law and checkpoints and no due process and being searched and having your private parts touched to get you conditioned for it. This is helicopters over Chicago, explosions, conditioning, because our Lord and Savior, the foreign banks, are coming to town there for the G20, so they've got to train you good. Uh, Blackhawks and A. MH6 Little Bird helicopters used by special forces circling low through downtown Chicago skies made a scary scene. Well, that's the point to scare you, the slaves. The Chicago River, as they rattled windows flying among the cities, and they're doing other warfare drills, men with automatic weapons, explosions, uh, all of it. All part of slave training. And again, if you talk about it, it doesn't exist. It's black helicopters. You talk about the TSA grabbing your wife's breast and literally getting a hold and making sure those are real. If you don't like it, doesn't exist, you're anti-American. Because the American flag now is a pot belly pedophile molesting a small child or grabbing your wife's crotch. If you're not for that, get out of America. Move to North Korea. We learned everything from them. Okay, let's move to this next story. We're going to play a clip of Ted Nugent saying that the federal government, Obama, Hillary, others are criminals. And they are. They ship tens of thousands of guns to Mexico to blame the Second Amendment. They've been caught shipping narcotics in, opium in. They've been caught giving billions of dollars to energy companies that don't exist. They are absolute mafia criminals. It's true. The problem is Bush was bought and paid for by the very same interest that owned Obama and now own Romney. So I agree with everything he says in these clips about, you know, the government's criminal, it's destroying the Bill of Rights, it's wiping its butt with the Constitution. But the problem is that Romney is for gun control, open borders, wrote Obamacare, for carbon taxes. Sure, now he says he isn't. But when he was actually a governor and in policy, that's what he did. So, sure, I hate Obama, but the next puppet isn't enticing. But there's a new twist in this before we go to this clip. Secret Service looking into Ted Nugent's violent anti-Obama rant the Canadian press. So now his speech is violent. Now his speech is bad. And tongue in cheek, he said he'd either be, quote, dead or in jail if Obama got elected, saying he was going to work his butt off to, and it was all tongue in cheek. I mean, are we going to arrest him for, I got you in a stranglehold, baby. I mean, is that now illegal? 
So it's this idea of secret service when they're not busy hanging out with prostitutes and everything. They're going to get Ted Nugent, and that report is in Yahoo News. Here's another one of CBS News report Secret Service investigating Ted Nugent. Why don't you investigate the New World Order bankers that hijacked this country? Oh, I forgot, you're collaborators with the New World Order in gutting this country. In fact, I want to introduce this idea. When the French got conquered through Vichy military that had stood down, the, the Nazis didn't defeat the French military. The entire French military stood down. A small British force fought them. And of course, they'd actually, their government made a double deal with Hitler telling him to invade, and then they double-crossed him. But the point is that they're called collaborators. Everybody that serves this new world order, everybody that goes along with butchering the Bill of Rights, Constitution, due process, let the White House and John Corzine steal billions, you're collaborators with a corporate takeover of America called the new world order, and you will be held accountable. I may not make it through this, but let me tell you something. You are the enemy. As Brzezinski admitted two years ago, the people know about the elite now and not just their front puppets like Obama and Mitt Romney. Not everybody is as political and dumbed down as, 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 as poor old Ted, who we're supporting in his First Amendment. You know, Ted's like, well, lesser of two evils. But it's what the system put in to run against him. It's like a Don King boxing match, Ted Nugent. Both fighters are owned. Admit the whole thing's a fraud. Stop being a chump. You know, you talk about get together, wake up, defend America. You know, Obama hates the Constitution. Yeah, so did Bush with torture, Patriot Act, secret arrest. Yeah, now Obama's got NDAA, saying he'll arrest and kill whoever he wants. Maybe they'll kill you like they did Breitbart. I talked to a Fox News insider today, and he was totally freaked out. He said they did kill Breitbart. Fox News is being intimidated, is being threatened. Of course they are. Since when does George Soros' little media matters intimidate everybody? It's the front of the White House. The point is, is that these aren't quarter measures or half measures where Mitt Romney, who you know rules his own planet or whatever, is going to save us. He's another bankster. But again, don't let the facts confuse you. The point is, we've got to support Nugent and his First Amendment. Here is his clip from the NRA conference that's got the globalists so upset. There's a, a hero of the military that just got his legs blown off for the U.S. Constitution, and we got a president and attorney general who doesn't even like the Constitution. Four Supreme Court justices signed their name to a declaration that Americans have no fundamental right to self-defense. And if you take that adamant, we the people defiance, remember we're Americans because we defied the king. We didn't negotiate and compromise with the king. We defied the emperors. And Ted goes on, we have the full video at Infowars.com from the NRA conference, to say they're criminals, they're out of control, they hate this country, and it's so true, that's what scares the system. Because this is an occupational usurper, hijacker, foreign banker takeover. I mean, the economists, all of them brag, oh, foreign banks conquered Europe. Well, you're not going to conquer me and then raise my taxes to pay it in banker bailouts. I mean, it's got to come to an end. These crazy... New World Order, bravada, chutzpah, arrogance-filled, hubris-filled New World Order people will destroy themselves if we don't stop them with us along with them. They're that crazy. By the way, we're going to go to break here with our interview coming up. I just want to impress upon everybody, we are having a reporter contest, $10,000 in prizes, $5,000 to a male reporter we're going to hire, $5,000 to a female reporter we're going to hire. And again, by hire, you're going to win the money. You'll be in the running to be hired. But I'm going to be honest with you. We need more women to enter the contest. We've had some great entries, but it's like for every 15 male entries, one female entry. Ladies, it's about your personality. It's about what you think and have to say. You don't have to have some big fancy set there. It's about you and your idea. So give us a rant. Give us a rant. Production's important, but not as important as your personality. So give us a rant. Let us hear what you have to say. Let us see your passion. We've gotten incredible hundreds of entries from men. Makes my head spin of every race, color, creed. And that's great. Men keep entering. But women, we're going to hire a female reporter. If we get a couple, only one will win the money, but multiple may get hired. We want to expand this operation. It isn't just about Alex Jones. So 
Go to InfoWars.com, go to the reporter contest area, or just Google InfoWars reporter contest and it'll lead you to the sub page. Make your video, put it on YouTube, send it to us. You've got until April 30th to get it introduced. There's plenty of time. I'm Alex Jones. We'll be right back after break. Stay with us. Not all member of Freemasonry is aware of the inner circle and what is happening. But that inner circle does worship Lucifer and considers him the light bearer or the bringer of light. Here we can see that Barack Obama is wearing a Masonic ring. Um, we can also see that he is throwing up the devil horns. This in the Satanic Bible is a salute to Lucifer, not rock on. Once a year, these high-powered presidents and captains of industry meet in Northern California at Bohemian Grove. Here they worship a large stone owl called Molech. Just media. I said it. I didn't say alternative media. <clears throat> I didn't say mainstream media. I didn't separate or try to divide and conquer. I just said media. This is an info war. It's a war, damn it. A war for your mind. Okay? Your brain. Your brain function. Your eyeballs are shooting right out of your brain, buddy. You're seeing all this on video and your brain is mesmerized. <laughs> okay? And you're mesmerized and turned on by the, the TV and the mainstream media. Okay? And what are they doing? They're looking off like this. And you watch their eyeballs skirting back and forth like that because they're reading off a teleprompter. Okay? What, what if Rick Santorum, who just dropped out of the presidential race, what did he just say like a month or two ago talking about like, oh, uh, all debates and all presidential speeches and conferences should have no teleprompters? Well, I don't know. I mean, maybe that might be great considering that our current uh, POTUS is just like... I mean, his eyeballs are, like, on crack, man. They're going back and forth, like, retarded. And then he messes up on words and stuff, and he just looks ridiculous, man. Okay, I can see you want to use drones to keep tabs on ships at a big sea. you got busy coastal areas and tons of commercial traffic to keep an eye on. That's why the U.S. Navy's decided to enlist the help of robots to root out pirates. you got the Office of Naval Research will test out a new device called a multi-mode sensor seeker which uses high definition cameras infrared cameras and laser radar technology aka LADAR to identify small boats on the water the new sensor will be outfitted on fire scouts unmanned helicopter drones that can take off and land on navy ships all the data they collect will then be analyzed by software against databases of schematics to identify potential targets we have people hungry here we have good, hardworking people who lost their homes. But the military-industrial complex is going to continue to march on. So now they have drones to patrol the oceans and spend millions and billions of dollars on this project. And to who? The military-industrial complex. In the next 10 minutes, you will see an interview with Ralph Epperson, an author, lecturer, and filmmaker, also from the Tucson, Arizona area. If you're unfamiliar with Ralph Epperson, he has written many books, uh, but is best well known for his works The Unseen Hand, an introduction to the conspiratorial view of history, written all the way back in 1985, which was before I was even born, he was talking about some of these really important subjects, and what was seen as totally fringe uh, back then is now becoming more and more true in spades. So people who used to mock and laugh at some of the things Ralph Epperson presented now are eating their own words. The other book he is most well known for is The New World Order, also by Ralph Epperson. This book came out all the way back in 1990, and just like The Unseen Hand, he has been proven to, to know what he is talking about in spades with books like these. First, before I get to that interview, I want to do a in politics, transparency is used as a means of holding public officials accountable and fighting corruption. It's true. You can look it up on Wikipedia. Google it. So you may be wondering, well, what does a transparency government mean? Well, really what it means is when a government's meeting is open to the press and to the public, its budgets may be reviewed by anyone. 
little information that I found troubling that I think you guys might also. Uh, I bet you didn't know that your former president, George W. Bush, was found guilty of war crimes in November of 2011 and labeled a terrorist. Former U.S. President George Bush and his former counterpart Tony Blair were found guilty of war crimes by the Kuala Lumpur War Crimes Tribunal, which held a four-day hearing in Malaysia. The five-panel tribunal unanimously decided that Bush and Blair committed genocide and crimes against peace and humanity when they invaded Iraq in 2003 in blatant violation of international law. Alex, I'm here at the second annual Elote Luchador Run, a 5K run here in Tulsa, Oklahoma, benefiting the local YMCA. But so much in the news these days, I want to find out if people know more about pop culture or what really matters in the news. Okay, what's your name, sir? Uh, my name is uh, El Fantasmo Rojo. What brought you out here to the run today? Uh, I go to Lote every for their tacos and heard about the run and trying to get into runner shape. I'm okay. still in training, obviously. Okay, and do you uh, wrestle? Have you ever wrestled? No, I've never done the wrestle. Uh, the Florida man who claimed he shot Trayvon Martin in self-defense, do you know his name? I've heard it. Do you know the name of Jay-Z and Beyonce's baby? Don't care. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a good answer. I like that answer. <laughs> All right. Uh, former Rutgers student Daru Ravi recently was recently convicted of committing what act in his dorm room? Sexual assault. Yeah, that's, that's close. He filmed his roommate. Okay, harassment. Yeah. Okay. Do you know who the governor of Oklahoma is? Uh, it's Mary Fallon, is it not? Yes, that is correct. Uh, the New York Jets recently acquired which high-profile quarterback from the Denver Broncos? Oh, man, you, you definitely picked the wrong person for these questions. Cause I really don't care. <laughs> All right. Is there anything that you do care about, sir? Uh, I play a lot of disc golf. In 2011, three Tulsa police officers and an ATF agent were sentenced on corruption charges, including stealing money and carrying firearms during drug trafficking. Can you name any one of the four? I cannot. Okay. I'll give you the names. It's Jeff Henderson, Harold Wells, Brandon McFadden, and J.J. Gary. I read some articles, I, but I didn't, you know, recollect. Don't touch that mouse. Coming up, the trailer for the Toronto hearings on 9-11, uncovering 10 years of deception, and then the director, Dan Dix, from Canada. <laughs> our biggest contest ever and we're looking for people who love freedom and who want to be all in in the resistance to tyrants so you say you want to fight the new world order why if you were on the radio if you were Alex Jones you'd really kick some globalist ass well here's your chance we're hiring not one but two new reporters whose reports are going to be on the radio, whose reports are going to be on the nightly news, who will even anchor the show. If you're ready, here's your chance to step into my shoes, and I hope you surpass what I've done. Two winners, $10,000 in prizes, and a shot to be a reporter inside the InfoWars.com command center. We're looking to hire one male reporter and one female reporter. And when you win, you win $5,000. Your video gets seen by hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people on YouTube. And you get put into the very front of the running to be hired as a reporter slash anchor right here in our operation. Do you have what it takes to be the next Info Warrior? The rules are posted below me here and at InfoWars.com. This is a big deal. You know, the globalists are expanding their global empire, but at the same time, the people are waking up all over the world. We've expanded our operations in the last year. We've added the nightly news five nights a week. We're making more special reports. We're reaching 15 million people every week. In a year, I want that to be 30 million. This is your chance to join the team. I want to see what you can do. But a big hint is this. Can your news piece make the news? Does it get people's attention? Does it educate people? Does it open minds? 
That's more important than being beautiful or speaking with perfect eloquence as an orator. All of that is important, but we're looking for people that have that magic spark, that fire of liberty in their heart, because I want you to join our team. I want to give you a launch pad so you can really take off and engage the globalist. And if this works, we'll have contests all the time and we'll continue to build this operation. I'm involved in a talent search, looking for people who have the fires of liberty burning in their hearts and their minds. You've got until April 30th to complete your news report, and then we'll announce the winners one week later. Are you going to join the info war? Do you have what it takes? It's up to you. All serious entries will be posted on InfoWars.com. So everybody wins. You're getting the message of liberty out, and that's what really matters. But in the final equation, it's not about showing Alex Jones what you got. It's about showing the world and the globalist that no army can stop an idea whose time has come. Join me in the info war. So you say you want to fight the info war. You say you want to go head up against the new world order. You can do a better job than Alex Jones. I know you can. And here's your chance to prove your mettle. I think the 10th anniversary is the appropriate occasion to sum up all the research that's been done over 10 years, which suggests that the story we've been given about 9-11 is not true. We wanted an investigation into all of the actions and failures that had led to the deaths of our loved ones and so many others on that horrible September day. A real investigation into 9-11 has never been done. Why didn't the commission deal with the collapse of Building 7, which some call the smoking gun? At 5.20 in the afternoon on 9-11, it fell vertically and symmetrically in six and a half seconds. NIST acknowledges WT-7 came down without resistance and without doing any work for over 100 feet. They even gave the equation of the line. It shows that the slope is exactly equal to the acceleration of gravity. The fact of freefall is literally proof of demolition. Boom, 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 boom. It's like 20 straight hits. We just heard one more explosion. That's about the fourth one we've heard. High-rise office buildings do not collapse due to fires. All three skyscrapers were destroyed by explosive controlled demolition. But take a close look now at the corner where you see developing a series of explosions rapidly advancing down the corner of the building much faster than the rest of these explosions, almost as fast as the free-falling objects. We have found what we call nanothermite. The thermite reaction was present and occurring at the World Trade Center on 9-11 and afterward in the pile at the World Trade Center site. Thermite must have been there one way or the other. The FBI's official 9-11 investigation code name is Pentagon. It's the official story, of course, in the 9-11 Commission report and all the media that follows their lead is that bombs really weren't involved at the World Trade Centers or the Pentagon. Americans know you can keep secrets. We kept the Manhattan Project secret. That had 100,000 people working on it. Conspiracies happen. We know that. Iran-Contra, Watergate. Conspiracy is a sound legal concept. We use it all the time. 9-11 has unleashed a roadmap of war and destruction. A war machine that has been building incrementally since Eisenhower warned us about it in 1961. Anybody who looks at it will realize that uh, we're not walking in there with, with tinfoil hats. Uh, we are just normal people. We are ordinary citizens 
who are concerned and trying to do something about it. This isn't over, this is just beginning. This is just beginning. And welcome back to this Tuesday, 17th of April, 2012 edition of InfoWars Nightly News. Now, we just talked about the unprecedented classical despotism integrated with a high-tech overlay in the news and analysis section of this transmission this evening. The unbelievable federalization, the checkpoints being set up across the country, but similarly with continuity of agenda, in every other nation controlled by the banksters. We discussed the secret Stasi TSA spies on the buses engaged in pre-crime analysis. But what is all this predicated on? What is it all built on? It's built on the fraud that is 9-11. Anyone who actually investigates the official narrative of 9-11 quickly discovers that the official story is a manifest fairy tale that makes modern fairy tales like Star Wars and ancient fairy tales like Aesop's fables pale in significance. And of course, I was talking about 9-11 before it took place, and then after it took place, day one had been exposing it from the beginning, understanding that it was a foundational event, because I'd read the PNAC documents by Dick Cheney, and also, of course, I'd read the Rand Corporation a few years before saying the system was going to use terror, wink, wink, they barely denied that they weren't, you know, wouldn't be the ones doing it to bring in this transformation away from free societies to the national security state. I mean, if the globalists will kill a million Iraqis for some oil and weapons sales and to secure a uh, larger uh, you know, global system over there for Israel and others, they would certainly enslave Americans, Canadians, Europeans, Chinese, it doesn't matter. This is a scientific system of permanently breaking the human will. And it's what we talk about. And this is the Reichstag fire, 9-11. Now, uh, there's a new six-hour production out, the Toronto hearings on 9-11, uncovering 10 years of deception. And it has the latest information, the integrated, vetted information, amazing people involved in it. Yes, we're selling it at InfoWars.com. If you get it there, you support our operation, but also Dan Dix. Uh, and the group that he's put together over the years, Press for Truth, and the other great films they've put out. You call this a presentation slash film. Very well done in the production, but it's the material that's so important. This is key to expose, because if, if the myth of 9-11 and this new religion of government worshiping and fear worshiping and police state worshiping is not deconstructed, which is beginning to happen, then they will be able to launch this global imperium. This is... The cross on which they're crucifying free societies everywhere is the 9-11 fable. As Webster Tarpley said many years ago in 2006 when we had our big C-SPAN event that they actually aired, um, C-SPAN said it was one of the record shows ever in their history uh, up until that time. Uh, they aired it taped. Uh, you know, he said at that event, we must take the lie of 9-11, the fraud, and break it because it's one of the main mechanisms. So joining us is Dan Dix, uncovering 10 years of deception, the Toronto hearings on 9-11, with the International Center for 9-11 Studies and Press for Truth uh, present it. And we, again, really appreciate uh, him coming on the show. Before I get to that, I want to read the quote of the day by Sun Tzu. Confront them with annihilation, and they will then survive. Plunge them into a deadly situation, and they will then live. When people fall into danger, they are then able to strive for victory. Unless you're taught not to defend yourself and taught that only the government can protect you from criminals or terrorists, and then the government says you're not allowed to protect yourself. That's what happened with 9-11. And so the revolution against this fraud is a revolution against tyranny, the spirit of tyranny itself. Dan joining us from Canada. Great to have you here with us today. Tell us about this film. We just saw the trailer coming in, but tell us why you put together this tour de force. Well, we were basically contacted by the International, uh, International Center for 9-11 Studies. Uh, they had put together and organized the 
international hearings, uh, which was a, a four day event, which was held last year back in September, uh, from September 8th, 9th, 10th and 11th. And they brought us on to basically be the uh, production crew to document the entire event. Um, so we did just that. Um, we put together a little, a, a solid little crew and set up about six different cameras and documented the entire four days worth of presentations. And these of course are presentations by expert witnesses. We're talking about scientists and architects and engineers and people who have been studying this, the, the, the events that transpired on that day for over 10 years now. And they all had very concise presentations and uh, we were brought on with the huge task, as you can imagine, to uh, document the four day event and compile it all into a comprehensive DVD. And we managed to do that, um, keeping it in at around six hours. Um, so it is kind of like a film, like a six hour long film, but it's more of an information DVD package of all the latest news and, and information on what took place that day. So this disc is absolutely crucial for anybody who wants to learn more about what actually took place that day and what didn't take place that day. D Dan, Dan, adding a caveat here, those of us that have been aware of this hoax for many, many years think that, well, everybody else must know or the debate's been finished. Those that won't look at the information, you know, those poor souls, those timid souls, let them crouch down and lick the hand that feeds them, the fetid hand of the eugenicist. But now we've seen the government shipping guns into Mexico to blame the Second Amendment and caught. We've seen the Justice Department now caught running the Trayvon Martin protest. That's now come out. Uh, and NBC editing the tape to make Martin sound like a racist to create a divide and conquer race war. Uh, we've seen fake WMD reports. We know now it was premeditated. Bush and Blair met twice and said, fix the intelligence. And they basically killed Dr. David Kelly, the head inspector, because he wouldn't go along with it. He said, this is a lie. And they said, die. Uh, but so, so now people are really ready to see the truth more than ever. And, and, and so much more has come out. Uh, what do you say in, in context with other false flags, Oklahoma City, now police officers, the ones they didn't kill, like Terrence Yankee, have come out on my show and others and, and said, yeah, the FBI came to the police station and said, if you talk about what you saw, we're going to kill you and your wife. I mean, they're on my show saying it. You can tell, you know, one of them, a sergeant and others, they're, they're scared, but they've got the courage to do it because they understand so many of these guys I talk to now that are whistleblowing say, look, I realize I could get killed, so I didn't talk about it all these years, but now I have to because this is such a tyranny, it doesn't matter. It's destroying the whole country, our, our, our children, our grandchildren. There comes a time when men have to not be worried about what people think of us, the peer pressure, or what even happens to us. We've got to say, whatever happens, happens. I'm throwing my full weight against you. But, but in a roundabout way, what I'm trying to say is, truth's time is coming. It's, it's only ripening now. And now is the time to redouble the efforts for 9-11 truth. Absolutely. I, I, I see what, where, where you're going with that, is, is that um, it was the ultimate false flag um, that was perpetuated upon the people. and. In, in the 10 years since, I think people are starting to catch on uh, to the fact that all these things we're seeing now, as you said, like we got the NDAA, we have, um, you know, a TSA sticking their hands down our pants, we, we have, uh, you know, the crackdown on our freedoms on, on the internet, all of these things people are starting to realize couldn't have been possible without the false flag known as 9-11. So yes, it has been 10 years, but more and more and more people are beginning to question what actually happened that day. And they're realizing that what the government is telling us is not necessarily uh, how it actually went down. And, and people are, are, are fed up with uh, the, the state of, of, of just the, the tyranny that is being poured upon the American people, Canadian people and people all over the world. So again, uh, that's why we wanted to um, get involved with this project and get this information out there. Um, so we would strongly encourage people, if, if you have not seen it yet, uh, please pick up your copy at Infowars.com or PressForTruth.ca because this information is absolutely crucial. Um, we will be uh, releasing all of their presentations completely unedited uh, at PressForTruth.ca because, as I said, um, getting getting this information out into the public is absolutely key. Um, but uh, if you would like the the um, edited down 
a comprehensive DVD, uh, you, you can get that at Press for Truth and, and Infowars.com. And I, I'd like to say in regards to the, the editing process of this disc, um, as I'm sure you can imagine, it was a rather overwhelming uh, task. And I want to say at this point, we have to give credit where credit's due. And none of this couldn't have been possible without the work of Press for Truth's own Stephen Davies. Uh, Stephen Davies really came through on us uh, for, for us on, on this project and uh, stayed up many, many restless nights editing and, and putting this uh, DVD together. Uh, so I wanted to uh, let people know that um, it couldn't have been done without Stephen Davies. And he's just did an outstanding job with this disc. Break down what is covered in a synopsis and, and, and who's in it, you know, how, how the committee was set up uh, for those that haven't seen it yet, so they get an idea of what they're going to witness. Basically, we've, we've structured it into each separate day. So um, the DVD has the four separate days, and then with, within each day, we have all of the guest speakers giving their presentations to the distinguished panel. And what is supposed to happen is at the end of the hearings in the following uh, months, uh, the panel will be reviewing all of the information submitted and uh, drafting up a report that um, will coincide with this DVD um, so that it can hopefully be the, the thing that is necessary to push for a real investigation into 9-11. So um, that's basically what the hearings was all about. And um, again, it, it takes time. It, it, it takes time to go over all this information. It's, a, it's an incredible amount of information. Um, and not only all the presentations, but I interviewed e each of the speakers. Um, we have people like uh, Niels Herrett and Peter Dale Scott and uh, Kevin Ryan and, and Richard Gage and, and David Chandler and uh, Cynthia McKinney. And, and the list just goes on and on. So many people who have been at the forefront of researching what took place that day over the last 10 years are in this film. And we not only documented their presentations, but we also got one-on-one -on -one sit down interviews with them. Um, so that in, in a nutshell is kind of what you can expect from the DVD. It's, it's a chronological um, documentation of the four day event uh, intermixed with my one-on-one -on -one interviews with all of them. And then, of course, uh, the steering committee uh, at the International Center for 9-11 Studies is now working on drafting up this report to coincide with this uh, DVD um, to hopefully petition governments and to get the proper uh, subpoena power and, and to be able to have, as, as I say, a, a real investigation into 9-11. Because as you'll see in this DVD, they completely shatter the uh, official narrative that uh, that was given on on what happened that day and um, I, another thing is speculation and an opinion was all left at at the door none of that uh, was brought up they, they stuck strictly to scientific facts and um, only things that they could prove scientifically and um, so that that's another uh, uh, thing that I think is great about this uh, this informational uh, package and again, the system admits our whole world is based now upon this event. Of course, you have a better chance of dying in automobile accidents and hundreds of other things, but they've really hyped the fear up, and, and, and the U.S. is now a land of cowards, home of slaves. At least that's what the system would like us to be. But when you think about that our whole world is based on this, it's good to spend six hours in two or three sittings to watch this, to take notes, and to encourage others to watch it. Because once you discover the official story is a fraud, then it forces you to realize, well, what else is a lie? Uh, again, what do you make of my point? Do you agree or disagree that now people are actually a lot more open uh, to the fact that government can't and shouldn't be trusted? Oh, there's no doubt. There's no doubt about this. Um, I, uh, such as yourself, uh, have been looking into uh, this particular topic for you know over a decade now. And you know, I remember talking about these things five, six, seven years ago, and it would be, uh, you know, uh, I'd be, be laughed at in some certain certain uh, cases. But uh, all that is changing um, because, as I say, I, I think what what we're seeing now is a culmination of the last um, a, an awakening that's been taking place over the last ten years 
and people are now to the point where they are ready to to uh, to, to open themselves up to the possibility of of this information. I, I, I like one of one of the presentations uh, in this DVD brings up for for the people who have a hard time uh, considering this information. Um, it, it's amazing, really. Still, the, the the there are people still out there who have the uh, cognitive dissonance where they. they you know, they literally won't believe what their very own eyes are telling them. And when you watch the video footage that's in, uh, included in this disc, it, especially in regards to the collapse of Building 7, you know, our own eyes are telling us that that looks like a controlled demolition. And one of, my, one of the presentations that I was rather impressed by was uh, from David Chandler and how he shows how the uh, NIST, the uh, National Institute, um, for uh, safety standards um, was scientifically flawed. Uh, the way that they presented the collapse of the uh, World Trade Center 7 couldn't have possibly happened that way. And he outlines it perfectly uh, in this DVD. So that's one of the uh, presentations that I was certainly impressed by. Dan, I want to bring up another subject to you, not just Fast and Furious, a proven false flag where the documents came out that the Justice Department did ship tens of thousands of guns to Mexico to help a crime wave, to then blame the crime wave in Mexico on the Second Amendment and try to ban semi-autos. I mean, they're caught. Boom. Uh, John Corzine, White House advisor stealing billions, MF Global, doesn't get in trouble, gets caught lying in Congress, all on record. Now, the fact that it's all out in the open, what about the fact that the West funded real Al-Qaeda to attack Libya and overthrow that? Now they admit it's real Al-Qaeda blowing up police stations in Syria, and our media is calling them freedom fighters, well, protesters with tanks and rocket launchers backed by the West. The fact that even the LA Times and others are like, wow, Al-Qaeda's working for NATO in the West, but I thought I've got to give my rights up because Al-Qaeda's going to get me. I mean, no one can be trusted. We're all Al-Qaeda. They've got to take the diaper off a two-year-old. You know, they've got to grope 95-year-old women to, and strip search them because Al-Qaeda, Dan. But the government gets Mutala, the underwear bomber, on the plane. That's on C-SPAN. Government admits it. And we first had the witnesses on that saw it, Mr. Haskell, now running for Congress. Kurt, if I want to get Kurt Haskell on to the crew, keep forgetting to do that. Um, probably thinks I'm snubbing him. I keep forgetting or asking the producer, and then they forget. Kurt Haskell, got to get him on. But, but the point is, I've just learned to do something right in midstream where we all get busy and forget. Uh, folks, it's total transparency here at InfoWars. So all of that's going on. I mean, what about the fact that Al-Qaeda openly works for the criminal elements that have hijacked our society and that they're trying to play us off against each other, Muslims and Westerners, in a divide-and-conquer stratagem? Absolutely, Alex. Everybody is, is currently uh, waking up to this fact that um, a lot of these groups like Al-Qaeda are orchestrated and funded and run by the government and it is again it, it all comes back to these false flag attacks that are beginning to be exposed now uh, because people are uh, using the internet people are starting their own blogs their own websites their own youtube channels and, and documenting these types of events and getting the information out there and uh the, you know it's an incredible time that we're living in where people are starting to really see through uh, all of these lies so it's encouraging and and, and it's it's a, it's hopeful for the future um and that's why we're you know we're so happy to finally be getting this dvd out that's been six months in the making to just add to that and to be able to contribute um to people uh, realizing, um, uh, you know, what these false flags are all about, uh, who starts them, what they get out of them. And, um, you know, we're, we're just, we're just so excited and happy to finally be able to release, uh, this DVD. Well, expanding on that, there's so many false flag examples. that makes my head spin. When I was in Denver in 08 for the DNC with Obama covering it, we had just gotten there like two days before it started. And there was this riot and arrest going on and i said man those anarchists that they just drug off look like cops because your average real anarchist on the street you know looks like they're on methamphetamine i mean i'm just doing an archetype uh and uh you know like a trust fund kid that you know hates their parents i'm not saying real anarchists are like that but kind of the street rat you know you, you know type that this is like their military service or something it's, it's like a genre they've bought into and I've been to enough events, like in Austin for the uh, Fortune 500 back in 2000, that, I mean, when it's like a, 
six foot three, 240 pound pure muscle guy with two other guys. I mean, they're cops. You can tell the bearing, the confidence, all of it. So I saw the cops do this fake arrest and it was, it was like over a hundred yards of people. So, and I went on air and I said, I think they just staged this to make it look like the protesters are bad here. Six months later, because of a lawsuit, Denver police admitted they'd staged that. Same thing happened in Seattle in 99, Italy, uh, the G20. I mean, it happens all the time. But when was it? Time flies. Was it 2008? They're in um, right outside Ottawa where the police got caught doing the same thing. And they got caught because the anarchists fighting with the police all had police boots on. You know, police issued boots. They think we're that dumb. I mean, this is just mainline criminality. When I was covering Bilderberg up in Canada, uh, there in the capital in Ottawa, we were outside town at the uh, big hotel outside of where it was happening. They had guys there going, hey, Alex, you want to attack something? And I'm like, you're a six foot five, obvious Royal Mounted Police. He's like, just like an FBI agent. And the guy's like, well, we're, he didn't even deny it because my camera guys were like 20 feet away. He goes, we're just making sure everything's all right. As soon as I called him out, it was like, it was like, knock it off. Yeah, and, I remember that. I was right there beside you. I, I remember that. You actually remember? Wow, well, I forgot you were there. That's right. I was there. You interviewed me. You included me in the uh, end game for that. Yeah, I remember that. Wow, so I forgot you were actually a witness of that. Yeah, yeah, I was right there beside you. I saw that guy saying that, saying stuff like, hey, we, maybe we should, uh, you know, get serious and do something. Why don't we actually do something to these guys and trying to get one of us to say, yeah, yeah, let's get violent. And then they let's had that fake hippie with the beret on going, I want to nuke, I want to nuke them, agree with me. And I'm like, and I just looked at the cops and I'm like, come on, man, we're just here protesting. Yeah. I mean, you know. But yeah, the, point is, the point is, it's not just like they're trying to get us to talk about violence to see if we will. They'll go and do it themselves is the point. Yeah. Well, like we documented, just like you said, these happens at the G20 summits. And of course, with the G20 event here in Toronto in 2010, and we documented that uh, in Into the Fire. And you can see these, these thuggish uh, black block types who some of them are running right behind the police line. You know, it's it's clear that there was police involvement and they're always trying to manipulate these events uh, to get uh, more control. And if people want to see that, you can certainly check that out uh, in, into the fire. That's also available at, at uh, Infowars.com. But we document how these uh, events are often manipulated by the police, by the authorities to gain more control over the people. Well said. Before I get to more on Islamic terror, in many cases being funded by criminal elements in Western governments and corporations, and explain how this works for people, other points you'd like to make about the inside job that's 9-11? Well, again, you know, that it, as you said, people are waking up to this, but at the same time, um, I, I'm still a little bit surprised sometimes uh, when I come across a lot of people who have never even heard of one of the biggest smoking guns, the collapse of World Trade Center 7. So many people still think that only two towers uh, collapsed uh, in New York on that day. And it still surprises me sometimes and, and where a lot of these people will dismiss these ideas as conspiracy theories, yet they haven't even seen any of the crucial evidence or they don't even know that World Trade Center 7 uh, collapsed that day. Um, so that, that just boggles my mind that that still goes on. And um, and again, that's that's why this information information is absolutely crucial to get out at this time. And um, I want to let people know that um, it is available the the DVD, um, but our, we have also made it available for download at PressForTruth.tv. And Alex, I've been stepping up my game this year. I started Press for Truth TV, and we're doing daily videos every day, uh, weekly video reports every Wednesday. And so if anybody likes our work at Press for Truth and you want to show your support, uh, we would ask that you subscribe to Press for Truth TV. You can download uh, the DVD and, um, of course, you'll get access to all of our films and our daily videos and week weekly reports. Uh, so that's a great way to show your support. Um, but as far as the um, condensed uh, edited DVD uh, version. If you want the actual physical package for your uh, collection, which I strongly recommend, um, please check it out at Infowars.com. It's, sure. it's a must-have for the collection. Sure. And of course, you authorize people to make copies of the DVD and to air it on Access Television? 
Absolutely. Yeah, we, we, we fully encourage people to please make copies of this disc, uh, burn it, hand it out to your friends and families and strangers, hold street actions in your town, uh, hold, hold uh, events and, and hand this information out there. Uh, just get it out there. Um, we absolutely fully encourage that. Well, the power, I mean, of people taking action for 17 years, starting on Access TV, over the years, so many people got woken up when somebody sees one of my shows or films on Access. People need to get it on Access TV. It's still there, still has a lot of viewers. People air clips of the films on college radio. They send links out to people. The power of, of little people taking action is so amazing. You know, in the last eight and a half months, Dan, we've just been beta testing InfoWars Nightly News. Some nights it's 30 minutes, most nights it's an hour and a half, two hours long. As we figure out how we want to do it, it's subscription at prisonplanet.tv. Then we post it the next day on YouTube, millions of viewers a week. Uh, we also uh, just have discovered that it's been on for like six months in England on cable. We've said free to air. People are downloading it. It's on a lot of cable systems now where the managers download it and put it on themselves, not just access. So without even providing the satellite uplinks and news sharing systems, which we're having to pay for and put in. It costs hundreds of thousands of dollars. We're, we're developing that right now. It's already getting out there because people are so hungry for the truth. That's what's exciting. Now, I want to show an analogy here, or not even an analogy. I want to go over a diagram here, Dan, because we just mentioned how the underwear bomber was gotten on the plane by the U.S. government, admitted in Congress a month and a half after I had witnesses on my show that witnessed it in Amsterdam, right as Chertoff rolls out the naked body scanners that he makes money off of. We talked about al-Qaeda being used by the West to overthrow Libya and try to overthrow Syria and calling them freedom fighters. I want to explain to people here with a drawing that I did while you were talking, uh, if we can get a document cam uh, shot of this. Uh, if you look right here, you've got the corporate crime syndicate, CCS, and all their management systems and all their global propaganda. They want to destroy nation states or use them as kamikazes against their neighbors. They want to get control of governments and uh, get the tax money back in bailouts. But to scare the USA and the West, Europe, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, into giving over their authority and a police state, which is just strengthening the coup d'etat, and financial penetration of this virus and to erect police state chains around the society to make sure that they're in full control, to fully metastasize like the cancer they are into the West, Muslim extremism. And if you go back to British intelligence helping set it up, overthrowing the moderate government in Iran, others, creating Al-Qaeda, creating Taliban, funding them, the hijackers trained at U.S. bases, all that's on record. That's how it works. So people think, are you saying the USA controls Al-Qaeda? No. Criminal elements in the corporate crime syndicate that have infiltrated and taken over the regulatory positions in government felt confident enough on 9-11, as Dick Cheney said, barring a big catalyzing Pearl Harbor event, that kills at least 3,000. And by the way, he said that. People can read that, the September 20th, 2000 document. We're not going to be able to go and invade all these countries in Africa, in Asia, in Eastern Europe, not for even America to take it over and bring freedom, but for to leverage the strength of the West against the rest of the world via the Muslim threat that's, quote, in every, you know, Indonesia, I mean, Asia, China, Mongolia, it's everywhere, Tibet, Africa, it's their excuse to go after Africa. It's the excuse to go after China. It's the excuse to go after Eastern Europe and all the Caucasus states and Russia and in South America. It's the excuse to invade all these areas. So they take us over, claim they're protecting us from this when they're financing this. That's full spectrum dominance. You want a war to go into Afghanistan and get their opium production? You fund the U.S. troops and NATO troops to go in. You simulate the attacks to get the West to do it. And then you even fund the Taliban and Al-Qaeda. That's full spectrum dominance to control the territory. So that's you know a, a, a crude breakdown for folks. And as soon as I explain that to good old boys, they go, oh, criminal corporate interests are funding Al-Qaeda, Taliban, and radical groups. They're putting the Muslim Brotherhood, that's Al-Qaeda light, in everywhere. 
I mean, Iraq, burkas, no women going to the college, total enslavement, Libya, 60 plus percent women graduating, whatever you want to say about Gaddafi empowering the people compared to, you know, uh, I'm not for socialism, but a true socialism where they actually were sharing the wealth with people, lifting up Africa, gone, destroyed, put Al Qaeda in, sexual mutilation, burkas, whole deals on. Same thing, shutting down freedom, taking the old dictator out, making it at least five times worse, most estimates are, in Egypt. Uh, attacking Assad, not saying he's a great guy, but they're using Al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda says we're going to kill the Christians and Jews once we get in there. And, and the media is like, you're not patriotic if you don't support Al-Qaeda. Now they're just out in the open. How are they going to get away with that? You know, it's, it's just, like, just like what you said. You know, they're providing the excuses for invasion. And um, look, look at the, the, the new boogeyman, uh, Joseph Kony, and, and, and their excuse to get in there into Uganda and the Congo and, you know, Somalia and Syria and other regions. Um, but the amazing thing is, to get back to what we were talking about before, is it is somewhat starting to fall apart. Just look at what that Kony 2012 thing, so many people saw it for what it is. Uh, they even had to, you know, shut off the, the comments on their videos because so many people were calling it out for what it was, which is a fraud. They saw that this is, um, this is a lie. This is an excuse to invade by, by NATO, by the UN, bypassing uh, congressional, you know, Congress who should have the ability to say whether or not the U.S. goes to war or not. They're trying to change that and just say, well, if, if, the, United, if the United Nations or NATO feels that for humanitarian purposes, we need to invade these countries, then so be it. But again, luckily uh, their, their charade is starting to fall. People are seeing through it more and more these days. Um, so we're just gonna have to really continue with our efforts at exposing these uh, false flag events for precisely what they are. It's just that small criminal elements within the governments who are the ones carrying out the majority of these types of events. It was the father of the U.S. Navy when uh, many, many times defeating odds three to one, four to one. John Paul Jones, when his ship was sinking and he refused to give up, and it turned out that the powder magazine blew up on the ship next, so he ended up winning because he held out for another hour or so, John Paul Jones said, they said, do you surrender? Or we're gonna you know, let you sink and kill you. And he said, I have not yet begun to fight. Well, I wanna say the new InfoWars motto is, we have not yet begun to fight. We have only begun to fight. And that's what it's all about. We know things are bad, they're worse than bad, they're crazy, uh, to quote uh, Network. But at least we're in the fight and that's what makes us human, that's what empowers us. I don't agree with a lot of what Nietzsche said, I've read several of his books. But I do agree with that which does not kill us only makes us stronger, and humanity will make it through this great time of uh, tumult. Dan Dix from Press for Truth, thank you so much for joining us. That's my pleasure, Alex. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's it for this extended edition of InfoWars Nightly News. Lord willing, and thanks to your support, we'll be back tomorrow night, 7 o'clock.